Lounge with Travify Academy, where we get to hear from travel industry voices and experts to learn more about their story and also what they see on the horizon for travel professionals. And I'm Stephanie Grice, and our guest today is Amber Zackham, who is creative director, creative director of House Social and Marketing Manager at Ambassador Travel. So welcome to the lounge, Amber. We're so excited to have you here today. Thank you so much, Stephanie. I'm excited to be here. Yes, I'm super pumped. And it's just so timely of what we're going to talk about today, just to be aware of, you know, all the trends happening in 2022. But before we get into all that, I just want to hear a little bit more about yourself. How did you find yourself in the travel industry and creating your own business as well? Yeah, it's um, like you said, a super exciting time right now for both, I think, you know, social media marketing as well as the travel industry. Um, which I have been a part of both for, um, well, since 2014. So I got out of college and I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do. And so a family friend of mine who actually um, is the owner of Ambassador Travel in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, they offered me a job to come in and just do some like backend work, just some like clerical office work until I figured out my next step. Um, I actually graduated college with a history degree. I wanted to work in museums. And um, so that's actually a pretty hard uh, industry to get into just because a lot of people that do museum work end up staying in their jobs until they retire. Um, <laughs> so uh, the I guess the universe had different plans for me. So I started doing um, some marketing and some social media work for that travel agency. And then by um, the spring of 2016, it was, I got a job offer from Mast Travel Network, which is a consortium located in the Chicagoland area. And I worked for them until um, December of 2020 when I decided to go out and start my own um, social media marketing firm. So I've been doing that for the last year. We just celebrated our one year anniversary. So that's exciting. And um, yeah, I guess that's kind of like my long story short version of how I ended up here today. That is so awesome. Well, congrats to you on the new endeavor. That's really, really cool. And I know that, you know, social media, especially, I bet you just saw it. It was so vitally important the past two years just to stay connected and all of that. So yeah, what a time, you know, to be stepping into those new roles and stuff. But but to talk about the future of 2022, because we're still in this really crazy time. We're still in the midst of a pandemic. We're learning how to navigate it. We still have some hiccups along the way, but there's so many different things changing. So what are those trends that you're seeing in 2022 that travelers really should be paying attention to when they're figuring out their marketing goals? Yeah. So, I mean, there is so much going on when it comes to social media, especially for the travel industry. I, I tell um, travel agents that I work with all the time that I feel like social media was created for our industry. It's, you know, we have the great opportunities to take the most beautiful photos in the world, take, you know, um, videos of unforgettable places and experiences that we have. So these trends are, you know, universal for all industries, but I think are made for the travel world. And um, for me, I picked out five um, that I want to talk about today because these are the ones that are really standing out to me. So um, the first is video. Um, I'll just go through, you know, the five I want to talk about, and then I can circle back and give you guys a little more detail. Video is going to be the biggest one this year and in the years to come. So this is kind of a, um, you know, this is the start if, you know, there, there's so much that we could talk about video, but that is something that I think everyone needs to, if they haven't already, kind of focus on in 2022. The next will be collaborations. Um, I'll get into that because Instagram just launched this really cool collaboration feature that I want everyone to know about. Third would definitely be the merging of Facebook and Instagram. If you don't know already, Facebook bought Instagram a few years ago, and they are slowly starting to kind of become one unit, especially when it comes to the business side. Um, then there are virtual options. So I know before we started recording the podcast, Stephanie and I talked about how virtual you know, meetings and Zoom in particular have become just part of life and definitely part of business. So that's a huge trend we're going to continue to see in 2022. And then finally, I'll definitely want to talk about 
bringing a personal aspect into your business. And I think that we have a really unique opportunity on how to do that in the travel industry. That's awesome. Yes. The virtual big time. Well, and like what you were saying is a lot of people before, you know, um, we had to go on to zoom and do things virtually, you know, people were saying, oh, I, that's not for me. I can't do it. And then you just got forced into it. And I was like, yeah, I can do this. It's, it's I think that <laughs> I think that's a little um, reminiscent of all technology, especially social media is once we're forced into doing it and we make it sort of a habit, it's less daunting and it becomes something that we all, you know, no matter how versed you are in technology are capable of doing for sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And on that too, with video being number one, what are some of your tips when, um, for an advisor just getting into it or cause video can be really daunting you're like, Oh my gosh. And you also think a lot of people think that you need to have this really elaborate setup. It needs to be professionally done really good. So what are your tips for people just getting started? For me, it's always start out with what you're comfortable with. So if for you, that means you are not on camera, that's totally fine. You have so many options these days to never be on camera, whether that's your face, your voice, whatever it is for you, you can avoid it. So, so many platforms, even TikTok itself, which I know is terrifying for some, um, have a lot of great features where you can just add photos in to make sort of a slideshow and add music and text and make a really great looking video. And then from there, you know, some people would actually rather just sit and talk to the camera instead of having to try to figure out how to piece together photos, text, music. So if you're comfortable sitting and talking to the camera, that's another great option. A lot of people rely on videos now to understand what's going on in the world, especially when it comes to travel. There's so many new changes that happen every day. So I feel like if you're someone who is excited about kind of just jumping in front of your phone, making a short video about today's, you know, recent changes in what restrictions are and um, vaccination statuses are worldwide, that's a really great route as well. And then finally, maybe you're comfortable taking a video, talking, but you're not necessarily comfortable um, being on the video. That's another option as well. So I feel like start out with, you know, wherever you feel like you are and then build from there. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, and I've got TikTok for sure. I know it sounds so scary and there's a learning curve, but then once you get it, it's like, it's as easy because it's made for people to just create, you know, bite-sized content and quick things. Exactly. So Yep, exactly. And I think for me, I tell people this all the time is I, whenever I'm, you know, something seems a little daunting, I start out playing around with it for my personal use. So I don't start out doing something for work. I'll, you know, make a video of a trip I just went on for myself or just pictures um, of me and my husband, whatever it is. And that way you're kind of having fun with it. And if you screw something up, you delete it and it's totally fine. And then you're, you're, getting that education as you play around with it. Yeah. And are there any um, tools like outside of if you're doing like TikTok, are there any software tools that or apps that people can download that are really easy for just creating that video? Definitely. I like one called Video Shop. It's free. Um, there are, you know, upgrades and paid versions of it, but it's a really easy um, format and um, very user-friendly when it comes to adding in either a bunch of videos to kind of create a longer form video, or you can do photos or a combination of the two. So sometimes I will make my videos on there and then upload them to TikTok. I find it a little more even user friendly than TikTok. So I would highly recommend it's available on, you know, in the app store or on Google play. So you'll be able to find that there. Yeah, that's awesome. So that's a good point too. You don't have to make it in TikTok. You can find something that you use universally for lots of other things. So Love yep, that. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And then you can put it also on, you know, Instagram in the reels option. You can also upload the video to your Facebook page or your uh, Twitter page, whatever, wherever you are marketing. Um, that's a great way to do that. Yeah. So cool. Yep. Video. It's, it's so doable. It's so doable. So really cool. I know it's, it's scary, but it's, it, you, you'll, you'll figure it out. The more you play around with it, the more you feel comfortable, it's going to be just like Facebook might have been daunting five or 10 years yeah. ago. It's the same thing. That's so true. Yeah, exactly that. And and like you said before, it's like made for travel because there's so much content that, you know, advisors just have individually because you're traveling to places, you're showing, you know, new resorts or whatever it might be. I mean, yeah, it's so cool. But 
Yeah. So, okay. Video number one. So that is that one. Um, the one that I'm also really interested in chatting more about too is collaborations. So yes. what would that entail? I, you know, for the other um, four trends that we're talking about today, I tried to stay pretty broad and not be, you know, like one very specific new feature on a platform, but I just find this one so exciting. I wanted to include it. Um, collaborations in general have been huge over the years. That's how we got um, the birth of social media influencers. However, there is a new feature on Instagram. It's called collaborations and you can easily do it by um, you. anyone on a business or personal page can do it. You can create a post and there is now a feature where you can click, you know, do a collaboration and you start typing in a person or a business name on Instagram and they have to accept it. However, once you, once they do, the post appears on both of your pages with the same text, the same image. And every time someone likes it on either page, both receive the like. Wow. I had no idea that was a thing. <gasps> that is so cool. Brand new. And it's so exciting for anyone that truly anyone that's in any business. This is great for travel agencies because I know a lot of travel agents that work, you know, it, you, you're small business owners. And so you, a lot of times work with other small businesses in your community. This is an awesome way to do that. Um, some people like to be able to just collaborate from their personal account to their business account sharing the same photo simultaneously. Um, and other times it's really, really great for giveaways. I just did, um, I work with a tour company out of New York. They're called On Location Tours. They do um, like movie and TV tours. And with the release of the new Sex in the City um, TV show, they do a Sex in the City tour. So they collaborated with Sarah Jessica Parker's shoe company and did a shoe and tour giveaway. And it was just a very simple, you know, like this, tag a friend and like both of the pages. And um, the tour company got like 6,000 new followers off based off of one, one post just from the collaboration feature. Wow. That is so cool. Yeah. That's amazing. And we've, we've been talking about collaborations for a while too, just different ideas to do, especially during the pandemic when it was like, what can we do? What kind of content can we put out there and just partner with your, um, yeah, your BDMs, just chat with them, talk to your suppliers. I mean, win-win easily. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think it would be really great for, um, like you're saying, any opportunity to work with tour companies and be able to do a collaboration post. I know a lot of BDMs offer, um, uh, they do a lot of co-ops. So this might be a new way to incorporate some ad spend from the tour yeah. companies. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's cool. I'm going to have to think about it's, some things there. That's sweet. It's, a, it's definitely a favorite new feature of mine. So I think it's going to take off and people are going to really, really love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so easy too. Oh my gosh. I love that. But on that one. So the next one that you had was um, Facebook and Instagram and IG together. So the, yes. the melding of those two. Correct. Yeah. So um, like I mentioned, when we first started chatting Facebook bought Instagram a couple years ago, so that's not necessarily news. However, I know that um, there's been a lot of changes. When Facebook first bought Instagram, it seemed like they were going to remain kind of separate entities. And as we've seen, and with the announcement of the new kind of umbrella company, Meta, we are getting a collaboration that we did not know we were going to have and did not know we maybe needed. But um, the business suite, the new Facebook business suite, which launched this summer, fall, depending on when you got the update, has showed us that, you know, Facebook and Instagram are becoming one and we have to kind of sink into the changes. I actually um, was listening to another podcast today about social media and they talked about how even if you're, you know, a little hesitant about all the changes that Facebook makes, they're not going to stop coming. It's kind of like complaining about the weather. We just kind of have to roll with it. And a lot of times, you know, once you start accepting the changes, you realize how great they can be. And I think that's kind of the case with the collaboration of Facebook and Instagram. I am always so hesitant with Facebook um, changes because I'm, you know, I'm so used to doing something one way and then they change it all up on me and I have to, you know, relearn it. And, um, you know, it takes a little more time, but I love that you can now on, on the Facebook business suite, you can schedule Facebook posts, you can 
schedule Instagram posts. You can schedule stories. There's no limit. I love um, the scheduling tool later, but the free version has a limit of 30 posts you can schedule. Facebook Business Suite does not have a limit. It also offers you insight into what times are best to post. It allows you to see analytics all in one place. Um, you can see your Instagram and Facebook messages, inboxes, comments on posts, all in your Facebook newsfeed. So it really is a marketer's dream to have things be in one location. And for anyone, you know, that is a business owner, travel agents that are, you know, own their own agencies, I know a lot of times we talk about not having time to do all of this. And this is just another way that it makes it a little more simplified, being able to have it all in one place and schedule multiple things across your two channels. Yep, absolutely. And that's really cool that you can do that now just in there because it used to be where you'd have to use an outside tool, you know, to get all of that. And how cool is it that you can schedule stories too? I just think that's so awesome. I know it's kind of a game changer, especially for people um, that, you know, do their post and then story them right away, just as an added like boost. That way it's already scheduled. You don't have to think about it. And a main tip I'm always telling anyone I work with is to just set aside 30 minutes a week to get your post scheduled. And this is just another opportunity to get more content out there, which I love. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's all it needs to take, you know, to spend, yeah, the 30 minutes and yeah, so, so awesome. Love that. These are really great tips. <laughs> so good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we have, well, we have two more, which, man, they're just all so good. But this one, we were, we've already been talking about, we've been talking about it a little bit, is the virtual options. Yes. So we saw, obviously, throughout the pandemic that the need for having a virtual option to communicate with our clients is a necessity. When we were shut down and we couldn't see people, it just became the only way to talk to clients, family, friends, everybody really. So I think that um, having that option, we saw a lot of different things spring up. We have obviously the um, availability to create events on Facebook now where you can go live in them. You can do chats, which is awesome. You know, events used to have to just be um, kind of, you know, you created the event in Facebook and it was something that was just out there for, you know, an in-person event. Now you can schedule an actual event that is linked to Facebook Live. Um, we obviously have all gotten very familiar with Zoom, whether we love it or hate it. And um you know, it's just become a way, another way in which we're able to reach more people. And I think that's something that um, is another part of evolving as the world evolves, being able to give our clients the option of what do they prefer. And I think there's generations that love to come in and book a trip. They love to talk on the phone. There's generations that prefer email or text. And now there's generations that want to do, uh, you know, face-to-face -face Zoom call. So being able to provide our clients whatever they prefer is going to allow us to expand our businesses and to stay, you know, relevant in a time where I know that the travel agent is always trying to reinvent themselves and to stay on top of, um, you know, the key factors on why travel agents are so important. And I think the pandemic really did the travel industry. Um, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a blessing, but I will say that people are seeing the need for travel agents again, um, especially when flights can get canceled uh, at the drop of a hat. You might not be able to get into a country that you've been you know, planning this trip for a few months. And so this is just another way for travel agents to be able to say, I am an expert at what I do. I can, you know, transform as technology transforms. And these are the options to be able to, you know, communicate with me, whichever you see fit. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent on that. Like, and I like it. The, I, I like how you mentioned to just give them the option of it. It doesn't mean that now everything is going to become, you know, a virtual meeting, but that option is there, you know, for that face to face and yeah. And how cool the, um, like Facebook lives and just doing those. And you, I mean, there's so many opportunities there that you can do just to get yourself out there some, some more, you know, so definitely. And that's another option for video too. kind of circling back to our first point, yeah. Facebook live. Instagram live. If you don't want to sit there and make a video and edit it, you can jump on a live and just say, you know, I'm going to do this once a week, Thursdays at 3 PM. I'm going to jump on and give you this week's latest in um, travel updates or, you know, whatever you want to talk about. And that's a pretty easy way. If you don't mind being in front of the camera to be able to do a video that doesn't require a whole lot of work. Yeah. It could be like a weekly coffee chat thing. So you exactly. make it so much fun. Exactly. And for something like that, just a quick tip, if you do create kind of a weekly coffee talk um, or maybe wine talk, depending on Ooh, how you're feeling that, that day, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I always suggest promoting it as well as um, encouraging people to submit questions to you beforehand, because sometimes those couple of questions people send in, get the ball rolling and get other people thinking of questions and actually asking them. Cause I know sometimes we plan these uh, live events and then we're kind of just sitting there chatting to ourselves, waiting for questions to come in. <laughs> yep, exactly. Yeah. Having those ahead of time, just a couple, I mean, you can plant them yourself too. Just like, Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I do that all the time. <laughs> yeah. I'll just plant this one in there. They'll never know. It's, it's exactly. great. Yeah. Just to get the ball rolling, like you said. So no, I, that is really cool. And so the last one in this too is just bringing a personal aspect to business marketing. Yeah, I don't think this is necessarily um, new to 2022. However, again, with the whole, you know, overall theme, I feel like of today of just evolving to stay relevant, people, you know, we've gone through the generations of people that, you know, the internet's new. And so everything is um, either a little scary or a little exciting, or maybe a combination of both. And then it was like, businesses need to present a certain um, kind of facade to be able to sell to whatever their demographic of customer is. And I think now, because we're so inundated with ads and um, you know various marketing, people want to buy from people now. They want to like the company. They want to like the people behind the company because we have endless options. So there's something about likability that's almost bringing us back in time, maybe a little bit, but is it's the new, it's the new likability um, on the internet. And I always say people buy from people they like, and um, it somehow creates a trust if uh, someone likes someone. And um, I just don't think that it's, it's such a simple thing, but I just don't think it's something to be overlooked. And that's why I included it in this list. And it's simple. It's a really simple thing to do. And my tips for this are just simply, you know, you don't have to only show business things on your business pages. So occasionally put up a photo from a family trip. Even if you don't want to post pictures of your kids or your family, put up a picture of scenery and talk about, you know, what you saw. You can um, put up a funny meme or GIF if you find it just, you know, relatable, even if it has nothing to do with travel or whatever industry you're in. And then also just converse when you're talking to people via, you know, their, co their comments or inbox, like you would to a friend. I, you still obviously need to retain some sort of a business relationship, but I don't think it needs to be as stiff as the way we used to talk online. People like um, marketing has really evolved to focus on its demographic and talk the way that who we're marketing to the way they talk. And so I think it's okay when someone likes something and says, oh, I can't, you know, I'm so excited to be able to travel to Australia. You don't have to say, well, if you're looking for a trip to Australia, please contact me at blah, blah, blah. I think it's fine to be like, we love that you're looking to travel to Australia. And if you're interested, we would be so excited to help you get down under, you know, just a very happy bubbly way of conversing as opposed to being business all the time. 
And I think it creates business opportunities more so than, you know, it's hard sometimes to decipher, am I talking to a person? Am I talking to a bot? And if someone knows that it's a person, it's going to immediately warm them up to whatever you're selling. Oh yeah. That is such a big one. And would you say too that sometimes it also, I feel like it can take time sometimes to develop that voice. Cause especially when one thing that I just noticed for me personally, sometimes when I'm scheduling things out, I start to sound less and less like myself or like, like fun because you're just like, it's just a task I'm trying to get done. So it's like something too, that don't be afraid. I feel like to try new things and to take a step back and be like, hold on one second. Does this sound like me? You know, things like that. Like how, how do you see that? Like when you're working with um, advisors on their marketing and stuff, do they just kind of have to find that a little bit that find that voice? Absolutely. I think it's basically the same as, you know, when you, when you think about when you started your business, um, what kind of image were you trying to portray? Are you, Uh, family vacation focused? Are you destination wedding honeymoon focused? Do you specialize in Ireland? You know, whatever that is, you are, you already know who you are. You already know what your company does. You already know what your specialties are. So just let, you know, let your voice come the same way naturally. If it's family vacations that you're marketing, I think it's going to, it's going to sound very different than maybe the luxury river cruises because your clients are different. And um, you might say something like, moms, are you sick of being at home with your kids? Great. Let's talk about travel. It's, there's a way of doing it that um, will come naturally to you if you let yourself put your personality into your business. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think that's just always so important that, yeah, you'll, you'll find that voice and that, and just being real authentic yourself and yeah, so cool. It's And it's a balance. Of course, you're going to have times where you're going to use marketing maybe sent over from your consortium, or you're going to find something from a supplier that you're going to use that they sent over the copy for. And so it might not be exactly the way you would write it every time, but I think it's important to work in the posts where it is you and it is really expressive of who you are and what your business is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Man, these are great. And before too, I have a couple more questions for you, but before um, we wrap up that part though, is there anything else that we didn't get a touch on that just that you see social media wise, marketing wise for this year? Yeah. So I, whenever I do webinars, I always end with like my tips and tricks. And so I I threw a couple together for today um, that I didn't send over to you beforehand. So (laughs) I'm surprising you as well. Yay. Um, The first is definitely always to just have fun with it. Social media was created to be social. So it's, it's supposed to be fun and it's supposed to, of course, we've gotten to the point where it's now something that we rely on because it's so important for our businesses and for marketing, but it's at its core supposed to be really enjoyable for people, whether that's, you know, a gorgeous photo or um, talking about an experience where you made pasta in Italy, you know, whatever that is, think about how um, social media should be enjoyable. And if you're not enjoying it, what, what can we change up about it? And that could be simply, um, you know, you not doing it, giving it outsourcing, I say is always something that you can do, whether that's someone in your office, handing off the tasks to them. Um, If you hire an intern, if you hire Um, you know, a social media firm, whatever that is, you have to figure out what works best for you. And that's going to be how you start seeing success on social media. Yes. I like that. That's a good reminder that you don't have to be the one doing it. Yeah. No, you don't. And I think there's so many opportunities to um, have a part in it, have your voice in it and not be maybe the sole person that handles it because you already have a full-time job and social media can be a full-time job. So it's important to kind of keep those um, things just as a reminder. And I think we've already kind of talked about it, but just not being afraid um, or I guess just being willing to adjust to changes because they're going to come and social strategy that worked a year ago, five years ago is not going to work today. Things are evolving very rapidly, especially with the pandemic and the need for so many different components um, of technology that 
leaning into those changes early on is going to benefit you in the long run for sure. And then just taking one thing. So when you listen to a webinar like this, when you do a training, um, just take one thing from it, apply it. And then once it becomes something you do consistent, then add another thing. I think a lot of times, especially when we go to conferences or we sit in on um, any sort of educational event, we get really excited because all of these ideas sound so fun and so great. And they are. And we should be excited about them. But I think a lot of times we all bite off a little more than we can chew. And then we don't end up applying any of them. So I think if you can just pick one total thing from today and start making it part of your routine, and then when you're feeling comfortable and you're feeling like you're doing it as often as needs to be done for your business, pick another one thing and add it. And after a year, you're gonna you're just gonna see how much more you did and how much more you know. Oh yeah, that is such another great tip too. It's just, <laughs> yeah, so many good tips, but that is really good. That it, it can feel so overwhelming, especially if you're not the kind of person who's like, oh, social media, you know, it's, it's there's, there's no more time for this, you know, that's so relatable. Just pick one thing and you'll learn it and you'll get better. And then, then you can add more. So that's cool. And exactly. one thing too, that I want to make sure to talk about is, um, your, so you have your own company, um, how social, so how can people find more information about that? Yeah. So we have a website. It is house social LLC.com. You can also find us on Facebook, House social LLC, as well as on Instagram. And there it's just at house social, um, and um, you can also reach me via email, which would be info at housesocialllc.com. Yeah. And I will put that link on um, for those listening here too. We will have it in our article. So our article and in the description, you'll see um, that link in there. But now, okay, the last thing that I wanted to, to talk about is um, this is going to be a little off topic, but but. Um, you have a podcast and I know it's not like travel or social media related, but how cool. That's so <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So I actually, um, so I do have my own podcast and I do do podcast production. So if that's something anyone is interested in too, they can reach out to me. I work with MAST. We have a podcast, um, at MAST called Masters of Travel, where the president and COO of MAST, John Warner interviews various travel professionals and then I also do podcast production for a community group based out of Oshkosh, Wisconsin called Communities. Um, it's called the Convo with Communities. So you can definitely check that out as well. But my own, um, my husband and I do a relationship podcast. It's called Relationship Goals? Question mark, And it is a weekly podcast based on um, be kind of our relationship in general, but also just like relationship topics. So it ranges from funny to um, more serious. And uh, it's where I learned how to do podcasts and podcast production, which I have now obviously um, created a portion of what I do for work in that. And so it's kind of relates to one of my tips that I said earlier is practicing these various tools um, for your personal can sometimes then eventually help with your business. <laughs> yeah, who knew? It's crazy. And and not to throw another um, idea out there for marketing social media, but podcasting, we brought it up so many times on this because it is, it's really easy to do. And there's so many tools that you can just download on your phone, your app and just do it. And it's just listening. People are literally just listening to it. So Absolutely. it's, yeah, it's free to post. Like anyone can do it. So it's, Super awesome. But yep. I just want to thank you so much for joining us here today. I mean, this was incredible. There's so much information. We're, we're going to have to do this every year now. You know, we're going to have to do 2023 coming up, I everything <laughs> all the time. So this is this is really, really great. Um, I, I love it. So many, so many good action items on here. And I just want to thank everyone as well for tuning into this episode of the Lounge of Travify Academy. And a special thank you again to our special guest, Amber, for joining us today. And be sure to subscribe to our podcast or subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of the latest episodes. And we hope you enjoyed this conversation today and join us again. But for now, stay safe and we will catch you on the next flight.